Logan Car whoa. Logan Paul's Charizard card supposedly got an offer of 1.5 million. I'll explain all my sources and things like that, but in the meantime, drop that like below because you're about to hear an incredible story about investing, stocks, and Pokemon cards. GameStop to the moon, AMC to the moon, all our stocks to the moon, Dogecoin to the moon. That is not a stock though, doesn't matter to the moon. I feel like I'm JFK, cause I'm headed to the moon. Welcome to the channel, we about to expand our wealth growth mindset. Okay, so people like Justin Bieber, Gary V, a lot of those types of folks have been saying the Charizard Pokemon card is a $1 million card. And I just had one question for them. By when? If we look at the highest sold Charizard card on eBay, it's $500,000. Now, I know a lot of people right now, they're like, oh my gosh, $500,000, who would pay that for a card? People pay that for rocks, right? Gold is just a shiny little rock. It doesn't really do much for society, yet it, it has a lot of money behind it. Same thing with Bitcoin. Like, look, look at all my Bitcoin right here. I'm holding it right now. You know, cyber currency, cryptocurrency, it, w what really is it? And yet, how is one coin currently worth about three? 38000 and peaked as high as $60,000. So don't be surprised that, oh, let me try to lift this, cards, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, cards could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and even millions as it is in this case. But my ultimate question is, by when? So if you have a $500,000 Charizard card and it doubles in price to a million, cool, you made a lot of money and it doubled, awesome. That's 100% return. Well, if it takes more than seven years for that to happen, I would much rather just have my money in a traditional United States index fund. Companies that belong to the top 500 inside of one place, one fund. I don't need to have $500,000 to get that type of double your money power. In fact, uh, index funds is one of the quickest ways that people get rich uh, sustainably and actually get to keep their wealth without ever selling anything and they could live off of it. You can't live off of your Charizard card. So if you're in investing in stocks, you have that privilege of one day being able to sell a percentage of your stocks and live off of them. When it comes to a Pokemon card, if it skyrockets to $20 million, it's not like you can sell 50,000 of it and live for a year, right? You have to sell the whole thing, which kind of sucks, but you know, who's going to complain about a card skyrocketing to $20 million at the end of the day? So the reason why this card is worth so much the Logan Paul card that he wore on his neck which by the way I've had that idea since 2015 any rapper or high-end type of famous person who has money can go to Johnny Dang and get a custom-made jewelry design but to get a Pokemon card sometimes money is not enough Logan Paul said that this card is worth a million dollars. Now, just because he says it's worth a million, I just said that the highest one sold for 500,000. Why is his worth a million? Well, there's a couple reasons why it might fetch this price. And in fact, he did get an offer that I believe is higher than that. And I'll explain why in a second. Um, but that $1 million Charizard card, uh, it's, hold on, what was I just saying? His Charizard card different is there's only three in the world of his version. And his version is, it's the original first edition Charizard in BGS 10. So the company, Beckett, they graded it as a 10 out of 10 uh, prestigious, amazing condition. That's what gives it its perceived value. There's a lot of Charizards that are graded 10 by other companies like PSA. And those cards sell currently for about $300,000. Business idea. Buy up as many of those as you can, group your money together, and then try to get them regraded by BGS. Now, even though that sounds like a cool idea and you might turn $300,000 into $1.5 million with a $1.2 million payout, it's still not guaranteed. The person who did give Logan Paul this over $1 million offer has like 20 of these first edition graded 10 PSA Charizards and he had none crossover to uh, a BGS 10, which is, which is kind of 
you know, however you feel about that, you feel about it, but it does show that there's differences in grading companies and how they're assessing the condition of a card. If it has one little white dot on the back, well, it might be worth, It's it still might be a 10 in one place and not a 10 in another. And that kind of helps explain this price difference. But the price difference of $1.2 million? Sheesh. Well, when it comes to Pokemon cards or rare collectibles, we're working with what's known as the pyramid model, where a lot of the accessible cards, the cards that are worth, you know, $20, $50, $100, and $1,000, and even tens of thousands of dollars these days are somewhere in the middle or below the pyramid. And the cards at the very top, well, they're not as impacted by price corrections. So when there's a stock market, not stock market crash, we're about to get the stock market crashes in a second. So when there's a market crash, for example, in Pokemon right now, there's a huge market crash. We have Charizard cards that are graded nine, used to sell for almost $60,000 just a couple months back, are now selling for around $30,000. Some were even very, very close to touching the low $20,000. That's huge. If that happened with the stock market, it would people would be jumping out of buildings. So when you're invested in collectibles, you have to be used to these giant price swings. Same thing with other asset classes that are alternative, like Bitcoin, which just fell from 60,000 to about 38,000, which is very similar to what Pokemon cards that are still high end, but more readily available. So there's there's at least a few hundred out there instead of a dozen or just three, as in the case with this Logan Paul BGS 10 Charizard. The top of the pyramid is exclusive. These are the cards where you might have five mil in the bank, but no one is going to sell you the card because they value it more than money. And Logan Paul got an offer from Gary he actually got two offers from Gary, King Pokemon, who's done so many awesome things for not just the Pokemon community, but autism research. He's got a daughter on the spectrum, and he's got a wife who's been, actually, I think she graduated, got her master's in autism research, and doing a lot of amazing stuff. They're always um, r raising money, collaborating with famous celebrities who r bring their name into autism awareness and research, and I mean, I work with children on the spectrum, so it, it means an extra lot to me and I, I really appreciate that Gary this this is why you're you're a king so I, I really appreciate you and uh, if you're watching this for whatever reason drop a comment below and, and say hey I was here S cards on the top of the pyramid are less touchable so even though we have this 30 50 60 percent price drops in certain cards those high-end stuff they're not really moving in price because the people who have that type of money well they're probably been investing for quite some time and they're used to fluctuations they know how the market works and they know to tolerate these giant drops warren buffett one of the wealthiest person people on earth says if you can't tolerate a 50 percent decline in your money then you might be better Better off not investing okay no one's better off not investing like it is the only way to grow wealth outside of a business and a business is still an investment of sorts um, but passive investments even conservative investments like index funds uh, you're gonna experience your money being cut in half at least five times during your investing journey in fact we saw the first uh, I saw my first crash of 2020 where five years of profits disappeared in a week and that was that was quite sad for me. But I tolerated and I held on. And I recently made an investment in Pokemon cards where I put in tens of thousands of dollars into a single card and I'm holding it. Whatever the price is, if someone walks up to me and says, I will pay you double what you paid for it, I would say, I don't know what you're talking about. No thanks. Uh, because I value that card so much more than money itself. It's uh, the way I diversify my portfolio. And at the end of the day, I really like the card and I care about it. And it is a Charizard card. Eventually, I'll make a video talking about it. In fact, if you want to see that type of video, drop a comment below. And I'll know there's a little bit of interest for that. And I'll drop a video explaining why I bought it, why I thought it was a good deal. Anyways, Gary said that he offered a Logan Paul more than what he believed Logan thought the card was work. I know that was a tough sentence. If you kept up, drop a like below because, uh, yeah, you, you deserve it. That like is for you. But the moral of the story is he offered more than what he thought that 
it was worth, which was a million dollars. That's what Logan Paul says. It's a million dollar card. And uh, I think he got offered more because Gary said he offered more than what Logan thought the card was worth. Then Logan Paul said, no, thank you. And then Gary made a second offer, meaning that he went even beyond that level. And then he had a sentence where he mentioned that at his point in life, where he has all of these rare cards and he sold some and he's taking care of his family and he's got a bunch of money now. Uh, good, good for you, Gary. Good for you. Uh, seriously, though, that that's awesome that you made this hobby so valuable for society that, you know, you got really rewarded for it. And that's why you are Gary King Pokemon, a true king. Um, but at the end of the day, when you have millions of dollars, would you rather have an extra 1.5 million or... A really rare Charizard card that there's only three in the world of. Now, if you watch Yu-Gi-Oh, you remember Seto Kaiba. He actually ripped up the fourth Blue Eyes White Dragon just so there could be three in the world and he could own them all and play them. I don't know why four Blue Eyes White Dragons were printed in the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, but uh, considering you could only use three in your deck... Uh, whatever Kaiba made his move and I bet those blue eyes white dragons that he had skyrocketed in Yu-Gi-Oh virtual show prices um Okay, so let me relate this back to the stock market. The top of the pyramid is high quality hard to get items, right? Collectibles. So when you do this with stocks, you're buying high quality companies. During a pandemic or during a market crash, what ends up happening is consumer goods, companies that provide value to society, no matter what's happening in the world, companies like Amazon, companies like Costco, they may crash, but they will not crash as hard as other companies that are just like, okay, you know, we're selling, I don't know, iPhones, right? Like who wants an iPhone, a new iPhone during a pandemic or, or during a market crash or when the economy is going down? Like who, who cares about the latest gadgets and toys anymore? No one. You care about food, you care about water, and you care about getting resources to yourself and your family. And that's why companies like Amazon and Costco and uh, Walmart during every single crash so far, uh, like 2008 and 2020, the prices may come down a little bit or more than likely they will retain and stay where they're at and sometimes even gradually increase. If you had purchased Amazon stock way back during the pandemic, uh, you would have about 80% plus returns, nearly doubling your money. So if you enjoy that gnarly thought comparison, talk about Pokemon cards, $1.5 million offers, uh, business opportunities, and uh, just the way that I presented things, which was just a tad bit scattered, but I'm just so excited by this news. Um, drop a like and a comment, and I will see you next time.